Hello and welcome to the conclusion of the week 11 in the National Football League. As always, I am your deputy commissioner and your host, Scotch on the sidelines, Dalton Van Pelt. With me, I have the commish, Zachary Stewart. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Uh, flexing that uh, Dallas tattoo for some reason. I'm not sure yeah. why. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if you're just hot or you're just like embarrassed or I'm not totally sure. I probably should have switched shirts because this was my undershirt today. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's pretty uncomfortable. So I just decided to roll up the sleeves and get to work. You know what I mean? Get to work. As we're drinking, Dalton's having a Manhattan. I am drinking an IPA tonight. So we'll see where this goes. Yeah. Got a bottle of Wyoming whiskey behind me, ready to go for when I finish the Manhattan. Nice. It's nothing deal. worse than getting to before halftime and I've already finished my drink. And then I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Oh, yeah. Here you go. Within the first minute. There you go. Not even. Officially explicit. How was the weekend, Dalton? Uh, it was good. I uh, My dad came down, so I hung out with him and nice. Lee and uh, watched the Dallas game. That was really frustrating. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really frustrating because they had a ton of chances. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch much of the afternoon slate of games. Um, it was so nice in Sheridan. I was like, it's the only day I'm going to get to probably put up my outside Christmas lights. So I went and got up on my ladder and roof and got all that stuff hung up before everybody comes for Thanksgiving this week. So wanted to get all that done ahead of time. And it was like 65 degrees. So perfect day to do it. So, but I didn't watch a lot of the afternoon slate. I did catch part of it going in and out of the house and, but caught the important parts. Mm-hmm. Was it a uh, red zone weekend? I guess it was. Uh, yeah, it was red zone from. I probably watched red zone from noon to noon to two forty five. So end of the first quarter of the afternoon games. I was on the tech team at church, so I was doing technology stuff during the services. So I didn't uh, catch the first. Uh, hour of the games. Um, looks like uh, Myron knocked over something. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he's trying to do. He's trying to jump up somewhere. <laughs> he's got. He's getting so old he can't really jump anymore. So I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. So I, I missed the first little little bit, but it's all good. But pretty much red zone weekend. Ready to get into it? IRL baby. All right. Let's first talk about the Patriots and the Falcons. Yeah. Um, so- Gross. Um, Just a gross game overall when you get – it's back-to-back weeks now that the Falcons have gotten Josh Rosen in the game, and it's the same thing that's happened is uh, an interception, which happened last week, uh, which was – which I see fitting why Sackett posted that uh, Josh Rosen clip on the the page, which is great. Um, Patriots, they're they're hot. They're one of the hottest teams – in the league right now. And if correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they're in the AFC East league now after Buffalo's yes. tromping. Um, Weird. Yeah. So they are on fire right now and comparatively for the rest of the NFL, Mac Jones, like is his completion percentage might be like a rookie all time high um, after this year, 20, 22 of 26 only for 200 yards. One touchdown. Uh, Damian Harris did come back, um, so it was pretty pretty close 50-50 split if I look at the snap counts. Um, let me see here. But that's what it looked like, at least on the field-wise. It was pretty close. Uh, Stevenson played 34% of the snaps, and Harris played 39%, so 25 yeah. So pretty much three-headed committee because uh, then Brandon Bolden got the other 27% of snaps. So three-headed committee, if you're going to play any of them, you're just you're hoping one of them falls in the end zone. Um, coincidentally, Sackett played both, which was an interesting move. Um, might not try to capture the entire thing. Um, Could have worked out a little bit better, but did pretty well. Um, the Bill Belichick 
Bill Belichickian thing is obviously take out your best player, and uh, the Falcons have only one of them, and his name's Kyle Pitts, and three for 29, and that's kind of what you expect from a Bill Belichick defense on a bracket tight end. Not much else. I mean, pretty no. dismal game. Uh, Russell Falcons game. offense yeah. was awful. Oh, so bad. Like, is it time where they – I mean, it, it, this is going to hurt with fantasy. I, I really hope they don't. Maybe it was just because of the game was out of hand, trying to give – I mean, they put it, put in Josh Rosen. Are we going to see a lot – are we going to see more Josh Rosen this year, do you think? you think they just give him a start to see how it goes, like a full week of practice as the starter and go from there? Kind of the whole uh, Eli Manning thing where they just kind of – that it's not going anywhere. They sit him down. They let the young buck do it because um, – Matt Ryan's Matt Ryan's not there next year. The question is, why would you do that? Well, they're already going to be out of the playoffs. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't really think he's worth anything. I, I don't know. Matt, oh, I don't know who Rosen or Ryan. Rosen, yeah, yeah. I mean, what else do they have to lose, though? I mean, they can't. Matt Ryan can't complete a ball. I, I know the Calvin Ridley thing is hurting them pretty bad. Um, but that's on him to get like healthy in his mind. Um, but they're they're not, they're going nowhere. I mean, who who would have thought the three? Uh, what week are we in? Yeah, week eleven. Who would have thought three months ago we'd say, man, the Falcons sure do miss Cordero Patterson. Like, never would have thought of that in my my right mind. Um, no, that's that's weird. But yeah, uh, without Cordero Patterson, they are in shambles because Mike Davis, they might. <laughs> oh man low floor low ceiling i mean you love those players um yeah I do. but i mean when quadre allison is out snapping mike davis on a short week you know that they they don't trust mike davis and it did sound like cordero patterson uh should be back next week he was warming up pregame so it was pretty close so maybe he will be back next week and you know, the Falcons can get back to the, get back their elite player. Yeah. He's, he's pretty damn good. Yeah. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't fault that line of thinking. Yeah. Really weird. It Other happens that, sometimes. Much. Uh, Patriots defense. That's about, uh, that was, that was a great play. Oh yeah. Um, yep. Nick, Nick Folk. Fantastic. Special the defense and special teams, man, you wrapped up a nice one right there. If you had both of them. It's true. <clears throat> Colts. Beat the Bills. Weird one. Jonathan Taylor is a monster. Man. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. If you, you put up 50 points in a fantasy game, you're, you're one heck of a player for sure. Yeah. You're doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, rainy game, um, obviously. And I hate when people say, well, if you took away this, you know, if this didn't happen, they wouldn't have had that. Um, I mean, the, the, the Bills, did turn over twice inside their own 20. So that helps Jonathan Taylor's numbers. One, one of the funny ones was the Isaiah, Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah. Isaiah McKenzie yes. fumbled like the turf monster got him and he fell and fumbled the ball. Nobody touched him and it got scooped up and went to bad bounce and went out at like the, like tackled at like the two yard line. And then the next play, Jonathan Taylor plunged in, um, mm-hmm. You got any other thoughts on that? I have a tweet I want to pull up and see if you can guess this. I honestly didn't watch very much the 11 o'clock games. Um, Yeah. I went to the gym and the store during those. So I did catch like glimpses, but honestly, once I saw this one was a blowout, I I really didn't care. I bet on this game. So I was just frustrated. So I really didn't pay attention to it whatsoever. Okay. uh, Jonathan Taylor became the 16th player. Um, to have five touchdowns in a game and only one, two, three, four player, four other players have done it since 2000. Can you name the f- other four players? Oh, that have gotten five touchdowns? At least five touchdowns in a game since 2000. Um, oh my gosh, I just had the name in my head. I'm going to guess Marshall Falk. And he did not do it. Jamal Lewis. Nope. You got a Jamal. I just had a name in my head and I forgot it. Um, t- 
Tori Holt? No. You, you, you had a Jamal. I'll give you the word Jamal. I don't know, man. I, I had a name, and you're going to say it, and I would have got it right, but I totally forgot it as soon as I started trying to think. Go ahead. Jamal Charles. Oh, okay. Five rushing at, touchdowns, I think, at, or four rushing, one receiving? Nope, just five touchdowns. Mm. Um, these are all running backs. Um, Jamal Charles, Alvin Kamara did it last year. He had six. Um, Clinton Portis. Okay. Sean Alexander. Uh, that, Those, that should have been a given. And Jonathan Taylor. So there are six, I mean, it's the 16th player to, to score five touchdowns, but only um, those ones have done it since 2000. So right. very, very rare company. Um, so the, uh, he might have solidified himself as, you know, one of the top picks next year for fantasy in the 2022 draft. Um, yeah. Absolutely. He's definitely solidified himself as a, I'd say, a top two option, um, just based on volume and touchdown equity. And um, they're throwing him the ball more. And Naheem Hines is kind of getting phased out most of the time. I mean, obviously, Hines is going to have a few decent games. But other than that, uh, Bill's lackluster. Josh Allen, turnover prone lately. Forcing the ball. They can't run the ball, save their life. Um, they're not even trying to run the ball. So all those, all the teams are just playing, you know, cover two shell and making them try to beat them underneath, and they're not. Moving on. Panthers lose to the Washington football team. Um, this is a game that Zach and I bet on. It was yes. looking like it was going to go my way for much of this game. Cam Newton. Yeah, Cam Newton. It is what it is. Yeah, that was a heck of a a uh, comeback for Cam Newton um, this week. But um, Washington does take it. Um, pretty resilient game. It was a pretty fun game to watch. Um, McCaffrey's kind of – I did of, catch the end of it, but I don't remember exactly what happened. Yeah, McCaffrey, um, he's kind of getting his back back into his rhythm of, you know, you know, most of the snaps and, you know, I, I still thoroughly believe McCaffrey is still the best player when healthy. Um, but that's the, the question when healthy. Um, he has missed quite a few games. That's where Jonathan Taylor might supersede him. Um, this might have been Taylor Heineke's best game as a professional. He was lights out. Um, back-to-back weeks, you know, 141.3 quarterback rating. Um, looking good. He He might be. He might be the starting quarterback next year. Which means they don't really want to do anything. You know what I mean? He's got, not going to win a Super Bowl with Taylor Heineke. No, but it give him a bridge to get another guy. I mean, is that all they're looking for? Theoretically. I mean, he's pretty young still, but, I mean, this is his first year as a really a starter. So, I mean, see what happens. Yeah. And they've been so battling injuries. They need true. some more. They need some more position players. DJ Moore gets back on track, five for fifty in a tutty. Um, yeah, I think Cam Newton's gonna unlock the Panthers' offense again. That's what it looks like. Which is all we're asking for. Yeah, Terry McLaurin with a nice game. He had a couple of really nice catches yep. in that game, which were highlighted. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Moving on. Baltimore without Lamar Jackson takes care of the Bears. I'm sure they didn't cover because they never do. I forgot to make that bet this week. That would have been a good um, one to cover on with Lamar being inactive. Yes. Um, I don't yeah, I don't know what the line was. Um I'm sure it wasn't very uh, I think I can look. Baltimore does pull it out. Uh hunt uh his name Tyler Tyler Huntley um yes. was the quarterback 26 of 36 don't know where he's from um let me see let's see here Utah ah okay a 
23 years old. Utah. I was looking at the Bears. Okay. Um, Bears Ravens line was. That was like six and a half. Um, to fill some time, uh, Justin Fields does go down. Andy Dalton comes in, immediately throws a, you know, quote unquote, seventy yard touchdown. It was a more of a screen and run, pretty much. Darnell Mooney did the majority of the work. Um, Darnell Mooney had, um, let's see here, um, quite a few targets. He had Sixteen targets for Darnell Mooney, and he wow. caught five. Five for 121 with a 60-yard touchdown. You like that. You like that. Um, Marquise Goodwin um, fills in for Allen Robinson. Goes Does his best performance, um, best Allen Robinson's best performance, four for 104 and a touchdown. Um, Andy Dalton was given the goods. Um, 11 of 23 for 200 yards, two touchdowns. Two uh, 50 yard touchdown and a 60 yard touchdown. <laughs> so, um, definitely some broken coverage for the Ravens on the Ravens side. Um, uh, Mark Andrews had did most of the work, eight for 73. Uh, Devonta Freeman had a really nice game for um, fantasy wise. And I mean, decent 50 yards on the ground, one touchdown, six catches on six targets, another 30 yards. Um, good for a 20 burger in fantasy but yes i mean look at the stat you would looking at the statue you would think that the the bears would have won but um the um ravens pull it out taylor huntley tyler huntley good for them good for them detroit moving and, oh did you get the spread yep uh no i'm still looking for it so oh, okay um Next one, Browns and Lions. This another game Dalton and I bet on uh, that we'll touch on. Um, really nasty game. Um, I feel like the Browns probably play the most games in really crappy weather. Um, uh, Browns do take uh, take the cake, thirteen to ten. Uh, Cleveland improves to six and five. Detroit, you know, the great record of zero nine and one. Um. The four scores in the game were a Jarvis Landry 16-yard rush touchdown, a Nick Chubb touchdown catch, a DeAndre Swift 57-yard touchdown run, and an Aldrich Rosas 43-yard field goal. And that's it. The Ravens, when they are not favored, are 100% they cover. When they are winning or, like, they're favored. Favored. The Steelers, yeah, when they are favored, they've only covered – 25% 25% of the time. Oh, wow. Um, Jarvis Henry does get nicked up in this. Um, also, Baker Mayfield gets nicked up again. Um, at what yes. point is it Case Keenum to come in? But um, it doesn't look like Case Keenum actually did come in the game. Um, but Baker Mayfield did finish. Nick Chubb, good game. Um, Tim Boyle. Um, was the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. Um, Dalton, how many yards did Tim Boyle throw for if you're not looking at it yet? Uh, sorry, I just ah, – okay. You can't play these games with me. I'm always looking at pro football reference. So 77 yards uh, with a quarterback Two rate picks. of 34.1. <laughs> um, Which was half or almost as good as Baker. Baker had a 53.2. Yeah, that is true. The difference was probably the touchdown and 100 yards. Yeah. Boyle doesn't need to crack 100. Uh, DeAndre Swift, uh, I think he's made a name for himself. He's going to be a first-round pick next year. Even on such a bad team, I think he's easily going to be a first-round pick next year. What do you think? Sorry, that was loud. High pedigree. Um, I feel like you have to put him in your top 10 running backs, but it's so volatile. Like, trusting the Lions offense is really scary. Yeah, he's doing it with – um, How many times has he been a, has he been a 100 yard rusher this year? If back to back. Uh, it's been back to back weeks. I know that for sure. Those are the only two weeks he's been a 100 yard rusher. He's leading the, but in in the game of fantasy football, he's leading the league in running back targets, and that's what you want to see. Really? Yes, he's leading the league. Okay. In running back targets, um, today he caught three catches for zero yards. Thank you, Tim Boyle. 
Um, but yeah, he's on, I believe he's on, he's on pace for an Alvin Kamara, like season 80 plus catches. So that's what you want from, at least in fantasy. Um, you don't need those hundred yard rushers. You need, you know, games, you know, get 50, 60 yards on the ground, but you're catching, you know, six for 60 as well. Um, that's what you want. And he's getting the touchdown equity. He finally broke a long one, which was good to see um, that he's got that explosive uh, run capability. But yeah, I think he's uh, worked himself up obviously to the top, top 10 running back for next year. But I mean, could be in the, the top in the first round, um, if not the second. It'll be interesting. Obviously. It'll be I think very interesting. I, I think he'll be in that back half. That'll be that'll be that that second, third year um, flip. San Francisco does what they're supposed to do against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Jimmy G controlled the game, but the yep. big story is the running backs. Mm-hmm. 19 carries for Jeff Wilson. Um, he really didn't do anything with it, but they just basically said, you know what? We're just going to run the ball like crazy. Yeah. Um, that uh, it seemed like every time they passed it, they scored a touchdown. Yeah, it was funny that second um that second drive of the Niners, 12 yard drive just sucked the life out of it. And then they yeah, they did a, a 12, 12, 12 minute drive basically. I believe in the first quarter the time of possession was like 13 to two, 13 minutes to two minutes. So um they just ran, ran it down their throat the entire time. Um Jacksonville gets on the board late with a James Robinson one yard plunge. Um other garbage than that, time. garbage time. James Robinson did nothing outside of that touchdown. Um, Debo Samuel did nothing besides run the ball. Um, he uh, had one one yeah. catch on two targets. He had eight carries. He still had a, eight carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown. He did have the 25-yard rushing touchdown, which mm-hmm. was awesome. Yeah, it's he's, he looks like – I mean, and we're going to say this more and more. Man, he looks, he looks like Cordero Patterson in the backfield. Um and that's what he's looking like. He's got yeah, eight rushes out of the backfield. His one catch came from the when he lined up in the backfield. Um, they said they basically just used him as a, the de facto running back this week and let Ayuk work the outside, um, which is which smart is game. weird, but which it's is, a good yeah. game plan. Good game plan. Um, but yeah, Debo Samuel, um, one catch for, on two targets, but got the the rushing equity. In that game with uh, Elijah Mitchell out, um, he should be back hopefully next week. Chiefs beat the Cowboys in a frustrating one. Uh, the Cowboys stopped the Chiefs five times in a row um, and could not do anything with it. Yeah, uh, Dallas loses. Obviously, uh, no Amari Cooper uh, tested positive for COVID. CD Lamb during he, the game. Yep, uh, Amari is on un, unvaccinated, so he will miss. A Thursday night game, so no turkey, no turkey gobbler for Amari Cooper, which he's a, a nope. good uh chance for a turkey bet gobbler. For that, um, yep. yeah, good bet. Um, Ooh, we, we might both have Michael Gallup on our team, we'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, Mar- uh, CD Lamb goes down into the first half, bangs his head on that interception, does get ruled out of the game with a concussion. Um, maybe gets cleared this week, but it's getting it's getting dicey. Um, we'll wait and see. Um, on on the short week, be huge for CD Lamb owners, obviously. Yep. Um, Chiefs, they're just thinking and dunking their way down the field now, and taking what the defense gives them. And it's weird. That, yeah, I mean, but that's what they got to do. They got to adjust. And um, Travis Kelsey gets a rushing touchdown. Um, uh, Tyree Kill isn't your big boom bust big play guy now he's more possession he's going to get nine catches for 80 yards and you're going to live with that get some some uh rushing equity in that as well um but the, going into their bye week yep going into their bye week uh um chiefs are now I, I remember when it was like i think the chiefs were like three and four and everyone's like oh my god the chiefs are gonna they, they're not gonna do it again and now um we're talking about the chiefs going back to the super bowl <laughs> so the Vikings beat the Green Bay Packers on a last second field goal kick by Greg Joseph. Best game of the day. Or se- uh, if, if not the first good. best or the second best. Um, this game was great. 
Um, a lot of scoring, obviously 64 points scored. That's, that's always great. If you want to see lots of scoring, Dalvin cook gets in the end zone. Justin Jefferson might be a top three. He's probably a top three wide receiver in the NFL right now. Um, dude's an animal. Um, Devontae, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. Is that probably the best three wide receivers in the league? Go one more time. Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson. Yes. No particular order, uh, but Jefferson's probably third. Yes. You, you can probably flip flop Adams and Tyreek Adams Hill. Hill, Jefferson. That's probably the top three. Yes. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling catches 75 yard touchdown pass with just two minutes to go. Um, people said they gave the Vikings a little bit too much time. Well, at first they thought they gave the, the Packers too much time. Then Rogers hooks up with MVS for a long touchdown. And then the Vikings go down, proceed to chip, 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 chip away and kick a game winning field goal after, uh, Kirk cousins almost gave it away. Um, oh, through one pick on that but on the first play of the next drive, but it was dropped as he didn't completely catch. And then the corner ran the route for the receiver and the corner just flat out missed the ball and Thielen caught it and went another like 30 yards. Um, that being said, the Vikings did the smart thing. They took a few kneel downs and had a Greg Joseph 29 yard chip shot to take down the Packers. Great game. Awesome. Great game. game. Great game. I did see some highlights from this one. Uh, AJ Dillon didn't uh, do what everyone didn't thought. Didn't really he was to produce do. like everyone wanted him to. Well, know. I mean, that's, I mean, he got like, I believe he got 15, 13, 14 fantasy points somewhere around there, uh, but he got no touchdowns. I mean, Aaron Rodgers got all the touchdowns. So that, that's the big difference in the big game for AJ Dillon. Where, um, right. You need Rogers, him to score some rushing yeah. touchdowns. Whereas Rodgers throws four touchdowns, you know, two to Adams, one to MVS, and then one to Josiah Degara. That I, helps nobody. nobody. Um, yeah, just great game overall. As weird as it sounds, this was another good game. Um, I don't yes. think anybody watched it, but Dolphins beat the Jets 24-17. to 17. I believe the Jets covered in this one, which they've mm. been doing a lot of lately. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm it was not like, sure. I think it was like six points, so they would have. The Jets would have, uh, they wouldn't have covered. Just lost. Okay. Um, Tua is good. Yeah. He's not bad. Um, he force fed the ball to Miles Gaskin. Michael Carter had the, had a good game, um, but he gets hurt with an ankle injury. Tevin Coleman comes in. He will be hot to trot on the waiver wire. Who is that? A light. Uh, Tevin Coleman. Yep. He's probably uh, picked up already. Not, not in ours, no. Okay. Elijah Moore continues his dominance. Um, I think that's four weeks in a row over eight points. This week he had a big one, eight for 141 and a touchdown. Yep. Um, but he loses his favorite uh, player in uh, Joe Flacco. Um, um, Joe Flacco is on the COVID list, as is Mike White. And so it is back means Zach it'll Wilson. be Zach Wilson, which means the Jets offense is gone. Yep. No more Elijah Moore. Bye-bye. Um, yeah. But they are playing the Texas this week. So I might still have to start him. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I, he's been so dominant. I had Elijah Moore two times on my team before I dropped him. I was like, okay, I can't wait any longer. And Dalton comes in and swoops of swoops for zero dollars. Yeah, I couldn't wait any longer. Oh well, I had, that I is had, had is. enough roster spots. That's that's the difference. Yeah, that's the difference. Um, yeah, Dolphins. Uh, only players you can really play are uh, Miles Gaskin every other week and Jalen Waddle every week. Every other week, which means I think I'm going to be forced to play him this week. With Michael though, Carter out yeah. of yep. Michael Carter out. Um, all right, let's, let's Texans get beat the Titans. What the hell is going on in the AFC? No one knows. Tyrod Taylor um, had a much better game in actuality than he mm-hmm. did on the box score. Yeah, only threw for 107 yards. Really weird. Catches two uh, runs in runs in two touchdowns. And Philip Lindsay gets waived yep. uh, today, I believe. Yep, he got cut today. Um, Dave Johnson, and that's it. Rex Burkett, baby. 
Rex Burkhead. Yep, Rex Burkhead, 18 carries for 40 yards. for 40. <laughs> and we sure want those four points. You want the touches. He's, <laughs> he's got the volume. volume yeah, he's got the key. volume, but he's only going to score eight four. points a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Adrian and- Peterson gets cut. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, Anthony Fertzker, uh, uh, touchdown, fumble naked. recovery. Fertzker naked. Fertzker naked. Um, Dontrell Hilliard, the big Titans running back. Who would have Who would have thought that? Um, eight, eight, ca- seven or eight catches. A um, couple thirty-five yards on the ground. Um, but it does look like it is a Donta Foreman, the lead, the lead early down back, um, and Hilliard slash McNichols on third down with the Adrian Peterson cut. Um, <laughs> Anthony uh, Des Fitzpatrick scores yeah. a touchdown first, in the uh, nomination for that helps. Nobody. I don't even yeah. know what position this guy plays, where he's from. Wide he's receiver. from – he was born in Farmington Hills, Michigan, out of Louisville. So, f- funny thing is, uh, they mentioned this on the game cast, Des Fitzpatrick is like the second ever player. Like, he was a fourth-round draft pick got cut in camp like didn't even like didn't even get close to the final roster got cut like the 90 man roster and they got back on the practice squad and with all the injuries he's finally worked his way back up and now he's you know he's starting and he's gonna be a starting receiver this was only his second game yeah yeah uh titans not much else to look at aj brown looks aj brown gets hurt he's gonna miss a week it looks like Um, really well, they have a bye week next week. So, I mean, a lot of teams are like, if they're close to the bye week, they're just going to, they're going to sit them down for an extra week and get that 14 plus days rest and live with it. The Titans are still eight and three. They're still the number one seed in the AFC. So, which is hilarious. I know they're no, no team wants to take who's the best team in the NFL. I don't know. No idea. Like every time you think there's a really good team, they lose. Look, look at the Bucks. The Bucks slid for a couple weeks. Yeah, the Rams have slid for the past few weeks. Yep. The Cardinals the Cowboys have a slid slide. against the Chiefs. The Chiefs can't score big points. All they do is stop people. And then yeah, the Chiefs yeah, slid early. The now they're on? getting hot. Nah, maybe it's the New England Patriots. Maybe the New England Patriots is the best team in the NFL. We actually don't know about it. That's gross. <laughs> and I, I was talking with someone today. Like everyone's like, "Well, was it Belichick? Was it Brady? It was actually both of them. They're both." The best ever. So you put two of the best ever together, they're both gonna be amazing. So best ever, yeah. So they're both great. Eagles beat Trevor Simeon and the Saints 40 to 29. Jalen Hurts, have yourself a day. Jake Elliott. Yeah. All over the box score. Yeah. Um, I believe the uh Go to the team stats. I believe the Eagles had 50 rushes, 50 for like 200 and let's see, yeah, 50 rushes for 242 yards against the There's number a lot one. of Miles Sanders. Jalen Hurts had 18 carries as well. Yes, for um, three touchdowns. Vulture yeah. them all. Well, well, they were they weren't all close touchdowns. Um, he had a 33 yarder. I believe he had like a 20 yarder. Oh no, he had a 24 yard was the long, but um, yeah, 18 carries for Hertz, 16 for Sanders, 10 for Howard, and six for he had a one Austin yarder, Scott. a three yarder, oh. and a 24 yarder. So he did vote. So that 20, that 24 yarder was sick. I'll have to pull it up. He 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 juked out. I believe it was Carl Granderson out of his jock strap. It was <laughs> he just. He a hard step in the grass and just pride of University of Wyoming. Yeah. Carl Granderson. Yeah, it was, he made him look stupid. Like it, it was a, it was a zone read, and Granderson was in the right area, and Hertz just took a hard jab into the end of the grass and just cuts back up and made him look silly. You have to check it out. Great play. Um, Dallas Goddard and Devonta Smith, the only two Eagles getting more than uh three targets. Um, that uh, Dallas Goddard, uh, pay that man, they already did, already so did. Good. Yep, Devonta Smith looking good as a rookie. Um, other than that, uh, that's about it. That's all you want right now. Miles Sanders first game back from uh COVID or no, not COVID, IR looks good, 
uh, from IR actually. Um, look good. Yep. Yeah. 16 for 94 and no catches, but it's that's available the... on the waiver wire on my uh, work league. I just, hopefully I get him tomorrow morning when I wake up. Is, is that one uh free agent bid? Yes. How much you bidding? Uh, 40 out of a hundred, I believe, but it's getting close to the end of the season and I need a running back bad because, nice. uh, I had C. I have Ceh and Daryl Williams, so I got to drop Daryl Williams, and then Ceh is on a buy anyway. There you go. Um, so if AJ Brown doesn't play, I'm going to be playing uh, Hunter Henry in my flex. Oh, oh gross! You yes. don't have any other receiver. It's a, uh, well, I have Devonte Smith, uh, Cooper Cup, AJ Brown, and how's Mark that Cooper? How's that one team I drafted? Uh, he's in first place. He's got four Broncos on his team, so he's changed a couple of things. But... I only drafted two. Yeah, he's, I drafted he's the good ones. Some more. Hey, but I did draft. I believe I did draft him Debo, and I I believe I drafted Debo with the last pick of the draft. <laughs> Bengals yeah. beat the Raiders thirty-two to thirteen. I was deathly afraid to bet on this game. Um, it's typically when I don't want to bet on a game, I should because Joe Mixon had himself a day. He did. Um, two tutties, 20 yarder and 30 a, carries. where's the other one? 20 and an 11 yarder. Yep. 20 carries, two touchdowns. Um, 30 Darren Waller. Carries. Oh, 30. Um, uh, Darren Waller figured it out. Yep. Um, it's about the only guy who did anything for Derek Carr, but Foster Moreau did catch the touchdown. Of course. Cause you know, Waller can't score in the red zone. So everybody knows uh, that. Evan McPherson, three 50-yard field goals. Wow. Great for a 20-plus day in fantasy land. Um, yeah, heck of a day there. Um, yeah, story of the day was Bengals, Joe Mixon, and Jamar Chase does get one. Great game in Los Angeles. The Chargers beat the Steelers 41-37. to I got to watch the uh, the highlights from the part I missed when I went to sleep. And holy cow, what a yeah, game. Th- this is what the, the other game I said that could have been classified as the best game of the day. Um, I actually didn't watch much of it because I – two things. The Steelers, I still – they're not very good. And <laughs> I had already lost fantasy, and I was like, I'm done with the day. I'm done. Uh, I don't want to watch you're it. You're welcome. And – it is what it is. Uh, but I, I did catch I, – I caught the last I, – I did turn it on when the game got a little close because I was stat, stat watching. Um, and I saw the game – did get close, so I did turn it on for the last, like, five minutes. Pretty good game. Um, Steelers uh, – the Chargers do choke it away a little bit. Block punt kind of turns yep. the thing turn, – turns it around. Block punt, and then um, Herbert throws a pick. Pittsburgh cashes in, ties the game. Um, and then they come back, and the Chargers go for it on fourth and one on their own, like, 30-yard line. Um, and they stuff Eckler, and Pittsburgh gets a chip shot field goal. Uh, Chargers come back out, little couple plays, and boom, boom, boom. Mike Williams, 50-yard touchdown. Basically ends the game there. Um, Austin Michael Eckler. Williams, yep. Mike Williams is the king of walk-offs this year. Oh, yeah. And Austin Eckler tried to do his best Jonathan Taylor impression. Um, I saw one tweet. Uh Austin Eckler is playing Jonathan Taylor in his fantasy matchup, and he's got to kind of catch up. He's got to play a little catch up. <laughs> so Austin Eckler is trying to put up um, a Jonathan Taylor like day. He does put up. 40, he had a good game. He did put up forty points, which is great. Um, but no fifty three. So um, Keenan Allen, great day, obviously. Um, but Eckler, Eckler, Eckler was the the show. Uh, two rush touchdowns, two pass touchdowns, and. And Herbert, big game, uh, ninety plus yards on the ground. That's 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 a big big. He deal. was running all over the place. Yeah, the Steelers were not playing spy, and um, he would just step up into the pocket, realize nobody was in the middle section of the field, and run for a first down. He did this yeah. over and over and over and over. I actually watched a decent amount of that game. Yeah, um, yeah, nine. It was exciting. For 90 I, every time he ran, I'd just be on the couch. Golf clap. Nine carries, 90 yards, and the long of 36. Yeah, he's looking good. He had, that 36-yard run was pretty nice. 
He slid um, at the very end of it. Quarterback protection, you know. Steelers end of it. Uh, Najee Harris falls in for a touchdown. A couple catches. He scored Fox. a lot of points for you. Yeah, he hit. I mean, for only 39 yards rushing, a touchdown, but he did get five catches. Um, Deontay Johnson, uh, the target machine, 13 more targets. Um, Pat Fryermuth catches the touchdown. It does look like Eric Ebron. That was a nice play. What? That was a nice play, his touchdown. Yep, a little tight end screen. Eric Ebron looks like he's going to be out the rest of the season. Um, so that boosts Pat Fryermuth as well. Um, yeah. is he? Does he get to go down as like – one of the best rookie tight ends of all fantasy time so far. No, Kyle Pitts is still going to be that. Oh, yeah, that's right. How are they going to stack up towards Evan Ingram and Evan Ingram's rookie year? That's the real question. Because those know. are the only three tight ends that are rookies who have done anything in the mm-hmm. recent memory. I bet they'll Let's both. take a look at that at the end of the year. Yeah. Cardinals, 23, Seahawks, 13. What the hell? Seahawks. Cole McCoy, huge day, 300 yards passing. James Conner, 21 rushes. They have uh, just decided, you know what? We're just going to run the shit out of the ball with James Conner because he can do that. Rondell Moore, 11 catches for 51 yards. I'll you. Jarvis Landry. I didn't start him, and I'm really not all that upset because who would have saw that coming? Do you want to know what his – do you know what air yards are? Yeah. So um, air yards are the yards the ball travels before you catch it. Yeah, you don't know what his uh your air yards were? Total? Yeah, so like his 11 catches um that he caught um 14 8 4 Oh my gosh. You go ahead. Negative 11. Negative 11 air yards? Is and he turned screen, the, screen, 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 yeah, screen. Yeah, it was all screen, screens. Screen. He caught 11 negative one yard screens and turned that into 51 yards. Zach Hurts with the ginormous day. He yeah. does end up with a Brett Favre shovel pass touchdown and then ends the day with a flat route, like one of the f- best fullback out of the backfield. Ang- no, angle route. He had an angle route touchdown. Um, towards the end of the game. Yeah. That was nice. That was a great trade for Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. Both of them. Both are playable tight ends. If you had drafted both of them, which I thought about doing, you'd be sitting pretty, but you would have had to sit there and hold on to Zach Ertz for no reason. For ever. And you and you at that time, you couldn't play either of them. If When no. Ertz and Goddard no. were together, you couldn't play either of them. You need like Ertz, Goddard, fan. Yeah, and now yeah, and now you can play both. So Patrick's drafting strategy. <laughs> yeah. Um Seattle is just it's sad right now. What the hell? Yeah, they're they're done. Yeah. They're done. They've been done. Uh as soon as the Russell Wilson injury happened, I had declared them dead, and they are still dead with Russell. It's pretty sad. DK Metcalf and his blonde hair looked real sad on the sideline. And that blonde hair looks better than the blue hair. That's true. <sighs> Yeah. Ryan Barrow suck up with the big game as the Buccaneers take out the Giants. Why are you crying face? Did he get hurt? Don't tell me he got hurt. No, I was another league of mine. I, I, so this is a league where it's, you get three points for a 30 yard or four points for 40, five points for 50, so on and so forth. I was up. I couldn't have suck up score 12. And he scores 13. I lose by like three quarters of a point. It sucked. Um, so that was a bummer because he kicked that 40 yarder. And I'm like, ah, damn. I was hoping it was like a 39 and it came in at 40. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. I'm hoping for a stack correction, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Buccaneers poured on. Tom Brady uh, divvies it out. Uh, six catches a piece for. Um, for Fournette, for Evans, for Godwin, and for Gronk. All catch six passes. All puts them all in great fantasy days. Obviously, Evans and Godwin catch the touchdowns. Rojo plunges in for a one-yard score. 
Uh, or I think it was a one yard score. But don't get me wrong with that. Um, I didn't say. Are you talking about Ronald Jones? He scored a touchdown. Yeah, six yards. Six yards. Okay. Um, Leonard Fournette gets most of the work on the ground, but does, like I said, catch six for 39. Oh, man. The Giants, um, uh, breaking news, fire Jason Garrett. Thank you. Uh, Saquon, in his return, has six targets for six receptions and 31 yards. He's basically the only one who could do anything, even though he really didn't do much, if that makes any sense. Um, Kadarius Tony had 12 targets. Do you think if the trade deadline had not already passed that Kadarius Tony would be a huge pickup right now if, since Jason Garrett got fired? I feel like that. Oh, God, yeah. I'm sitting on him in multiple leagues. I bet you he's uh, – you've got to start him every week going forward. He was my um, – and we can talk about this off air, but uh, Kevin and I's team that we split, he was our big money free agent we picked up um, the week before the Dallas game. Um, so we had the one like decent game and we threw buku bucks on him. We paid like almost 500 bucks for him. And we've been, we played him one week and we've been sitting on his ass the entire second half of the season, hoping we can play him and we might be able to get our, get our wish um, this next couple of weeks. Yeah. Keyshawn bond works into the mix. Three Garvey. carries for four oh, yards. Last drive of the game. They pulled Tom Brady. They pulled. So they just, they put him in. That was it. Rashard Perriman gets elevated from the practice squad. Yeah. One catch for or one rush for negative three yards, four targets, two catches, 19 yards. I'm guessing that was also from – well, no, it couldn't have been from Blaine Gabbert. Some of it had to be from Brady because it was four targets. Mm-hmm. And Gabbert had two for two for 11 yards and yep. a sack. And two rushes for negative two yards. Gabbert. Blaine. Gabbert. Mike Blaine. Evans becomes the all-time touchdown leader in Buccaneers history. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, yeah big He's time. Been good forever. Good forever. product of Texas AM. Yep. Good for him. That that does it for the IRL football. It was a fun yeah. week. Uh we both got to watch quite a bit. Yep. Um cannot wait for Thursday, but we'll talk about that here soon. Let's go to break. Let's do it. And we're back. It didn't really have that much of a satisfying sound like it should have. Yeah, That's it's okay. A, this is a um, a local place that can their own beer. It did kind of oh, so doesn't have that. Yeah, we'll see what it sounds like on the podcast. <laughs> First, it it didn't sound very good. Okay, but that was supposed to be a click and a pop. First matchup. Yeah, it's just like that. Good job. Like that. Cody continues his dominant streak. Um, I'm pretty sure. Well, he's won five in a row. So back yes. when he was four and two and he was all the way injured. Now he's not all the way injured. And uh, I mean, minus Calvin Ridley and Allen Robinson yep. sucking ass. Yep. Cody wins it wire to wire from mm-hmm. Thursday night on 166.48 to 119.52. He was the highest scoring player the week. this week. It started um, off with a 28 sucks. point. I almost had it. Started off with a 28 point shell of the Patriots defense. So that helps quite a bit. And he does take a zero. 19 points from Chris Godwin. Yep. And he does take a zero in Dan Arnold. In his flex spot. Yeah. How do you start Dan Arnold over CH or Tyler Boyd? I will never understand that decision. But. A little scared. You never know. Dan um, Arnold's been been hot, man. He has. Garrett, um, he is in 11th place now, shockingly. um. As we go through these, I do have everyone's division records. So okay, sack it. it wrapped up. Yep. Uh, go ahead. And so I'll, I'll go team by team um, as we do this. Sack it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, five and one record in division play. Against. Oh, in, in, uh, in, inter. Inter, inter, inter no, division no, no. play. No, not inter. Out of. Um, out of. <laughs> out of division play. Sack it. Five and one. Don't tell me who he lost to. I can't remember who he played. He played. Whoever he lost to week one. Um, Dark Horse. Oh, no, sorry. Dark Horse, 0-6. Ooh, against the other division. Well, that's the tough division. No, it's not. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. Sorry. Yes, it is. I'll shut the fuck up and let you uh, guide us. 
drink to that. Hold on. I'll just do this. And Ooh, you can out of the guide us through. You can break down the matchups. I'll I'll give the I'll give the, the breakdowns. Stats and I'll shut the fuck up. All right, which one right. you want to next? Uh, let's save a more hotly contested one for later on. So we'll, we will go to Monsters in Freight Trains taking yeah. out Brinkman. Uh, yep. He gets back on track and he uh, basically ran away with it after. Wait, hold on. He did not win until Monday night. Yeah, officially, he only needed like three points from Fournette. It was going to be a lot closer until Austin Eckler went off. Off, 41 and a half. Yep. He actually was looking at like he was going to lose it until Austin Eckler did that. Yep. It was looking like it was going to be really close. Uh, Brinkman did get a big game from Rodgers, Mark Ingram, Justin Jefferson, like we said. Um, Tyler Bass, it cost him the game. He missed uh, – Eight points. It didn't cost him totally the game, but uh, eight points definitely hurt. Yeah, um, he still would have lost, but eight points is a lot. Uh, Luke's division record, um, outer division record, five and one. Of course, one loss against me last week. Yep. Uh, Brinkman, two and four. He lost to me as well. That's the other division, dude. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, man, blaster. Blaster, sorry, blaster, blaster. I know. I saw him. I saw Look him at this play. chart. Are you, do you um, have the game center pulled up? Yeah. Look at the chart. He didn't have oh, a shot. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah, well, it doesn't uh, help. Uh, DK Metcalf was bad. Barkley wasn't very good. T. Higgins, oh, bad. Um, Cole. His entire team is just bad. Yep. Out mm-hmm. of nowhere. Like, you look at the names and you think, okay. It's got a, it looks like a good team. Oh, man. No, just rough. They can't do anything. Obviously, uh, he blast. loses by 40 in a very winnable game. Um, yeah. He actually had a shot, I thought, for a while. Like, the projections were favoring him for a while. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he just, his team just didn't couldn't do anything. Blaster has officially lost to every team in the league. Oh. Uh, 0-11. That's an accomplishment. Um, I did go back through the hard records. The worst start ever was 0-8, but now it's 0-11. Oh, it was only 0-8? 0-8 was the worst start ever. It was the first year. Oh, but it's it's not the losing in a row. And uh, but he just Bla- tied it, right? Blaster has tied the longest losing streak ever in Jim City Greater history at eleven. So he may break it this week. It's not a good thing. Patrick, um, what's that? Blaster, obviously zero and six. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Cole coming in with a win streak, three and three now. Um, it's won three in a row. He's he was at, he was the other way. He was at two and six and now has worked his way up to five and six back into the playoff mix. Honestly. Um, yes, he is. He's in seventh place. He is. Um, all right here. So which game we are you going to next? Got Patrick takes out uh, Drew. Mm-hmm. Did Drew have some injury issues or what the hell happened this week? Uh, yes. Is the answer and some bye week stuff and his, he's been overperforming let's be honest yes he has been um drew to five and six still in the playoffs just burly go ahead yep. drew two and four outer division play patrick another five and one team so luke patrick and sack at all just, five it's and theme. one it's, it's a the theme. theme yeah you, wait till we get to the the end result of outer division play um this lean. happens every year okay yeah lean this is a huge game. Huge upset. Lean. Huge. At the very end. At the very end of the night. I didn't actually realize he won this game until just now, by the way. He, Heath loses with suck Jonathan up. Taylor. Oh, oh, it was suck up and the Bucks and the Bucks defense. 24 points on Monday night between the defense oh and special gosh. teams. Heath loses with Jonathan Taylor. That's rough. Oof. That's rough. Oof. He's Oof, still sitting in fifth place because he is number two. Yep. Which actually, I think he's higher than fifth because he's number two. I believe he'd be in fourth place. Yeah. No, he'll be in. No, it's Patrick out. I'm not him. sure. Uh, Patrick's uh, higher. Okay. Uh, he, Heath is the five. Yeah, lean. What the hell, man? Yeah. Technically Big win. still alive. 
technically i don't know i have no idea i don't think so um <laughs> he gets five, obviously five and eight or big uh, games from joe be, six and eight if he went out if he wins out yeah if was this his highest scoring game of the year it might be i could check that out i'm no it up right no now. he beat he beat blaster with a 150 blast it was 150 to like 147 that was the closest blaster got um that was just in the last few few weeks um Heath three and three in outer conference play. Yeah, one fifty point two. Good job. Yeah. Quite the memory on you. Look at the big brain on Brad. Um, Heath three and three in outer division play, and Lean three and three. What? And oh, it's a week. Your your division's weak. Um, no, he was playing your division and made it three. And no, three. he's in my division. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, three so all and three. three of his wins came in, in in out of division play. All three of his wins, exactly. Uh, Blaster, Heath, and I believe Dark Horse. Um, so yeah, despicable guys. What are we doing? Despicable. Get your your division. Get them in line every man. year. Every get them in line. And and the Energy Bowl, the only bowl game of the week. Dalton, the floor Finally. is the floor is yours. I'll give it to you. Um, there was not very many highlights on this chart, but basically since 3 o'clock on Sunday, 1,500, I was in the lead, and I uh, made it happen. Justin Herbert sealed the deal. Um, Terry McLaurin does what he's supposed to finally. The, the Debo trade actually works out better in your favor in terms of points in this matchup, Yep. but I'm very happy with the trade that we made. Um, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. I'm, I'm, I'm still good with the, the trade. I'm, I'm not still good worried with it. about it. Elijah Moore, uh, the last second switch for him instead of Antonio Gibson. You, uh, you did that just because I love Elijah Moore. You just stuck nope. him, stuck the knife in and just, I did it, it because, uh, because it was a, it was an odd week, which meant I had to play miles Gaskin <laughs> and, uh, you got to play Michael Carter every week and i was i was um, so bummed when amari got ruled out and you had Gallup, and i'm like oh crap yes i had to play Gallup. he actually did under he did but we already talked about the cowboys and their woes so yep the cowboys they sucked it up but doesn't matter um i get the win which is huge for me because i normally lose the matchup between zach you, um, and oh, also you. i needed the cushion i needed the cushion against heath yes yeah, really did. bad um that move from elijah moore to antonio gibson did not it not the difference it didn't matter you would have won either way but it would have been a lot closer i did the math you would have won by 3.96 so that the deontay johnson Najee harris thing would have been real close that last justin herbert touchdown would have won you you the game yeah um sweating it um on my end looking at it um best i could have done um I mean, right process, you know, I'm always going to trust my process with my kickers and defenses. Um, just McLaughlin gets one blocked, a PAT blocked, and a uh, missed field goal. Titans, you play the worst team in the league, you get a zero. Um, uh, They're not the worst team in the league. No, Jacksonville is. Yes. Um, either way, one of the worst teams in the league. Um I had to I not totally scramble. I, I did um, had some rep- I, I would say I was following the news. Lamar Jackson wasn't feeling well. It seemed like it was wor- worse than his normal. Um, I always made a joke that Lamar always missed practice on Wednesday with the brown bottle flu. Um, but um, obviously <laughs> it's, it's something a little bit different. Um, he actually missed this game. I was on ahead of the radar and picked up Cam Newton, plugged and played him for 26, which was nice um yeah not much not much more i could have done um you know could have squeezed in you know obviously i made some moves late um but the only one i would it would have only been less than a point rashad bateman i i had flirted with playing rashad bateman but after lamar wasn't playing i wasn't going to play bateman um nothing i could have done put up you know 136 not 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 bad not bad at all but uh dalton does take 
this round in the energy bowl and a little energy bowl update. Normally I don't do this on all of the rivalry matchups. Um, since the start of the league, Dalton and I have played 10 times. Dalton with a winning record. Twice in the six, playoffs? Uh, once in the playoffs last year. Okay. Last year was the only time we played in the playoffs. Um, there was a year we played twice in the season. Twice. Um, Dalton with the six and four record over the commish. Um, and I, I did a little, uh, I added up all the scores. Coincidentally, I have more points than you and I have a losing record. 13, 1389.66 to 1303.22. The Miami Marlins of that matchup. So that's a bummer there. Um, uh, that is what it is. Um, I am still the highest scoring team. By 12 points. Um, uh, the Am I triple, right below you? You are 12 points. The triple crown wow. could be could be in Stop effect. It, it nope, could be. Don't do that. Uh, don't do that to me. Okay. Uh, but Luke, Luke and Sackett do play, I believe, in two weeks. That could determine um, the one seed, but Dalton's also in that mix. He's only one game behind them. Um, Shut up. <laughs> I don't I don't um, even want to hear it. If it happens, say, it happens. Um Dalton doing real well. Um, formidable match. Um, um, I was uh, four and two in conference, outer conference play. Dalton also four and two. That being said, Dalton is the only team in your division with a winning record. With a winning record. Yep. Everyone in my division, no losing records. So Heath had a three and three record. So Four of your six losing records. No one in my division had a losing record. That means the overall breakdown, uh, the your division, the war, never won a week. They tied Every twice. Ever they tied in week six and week ten at three and three, but the overall record, um, uh, weeks eight. Nine and eleven. Did you in five and one? There was no clean sweeps. Not one week that a, t- a division got swept. But the double A is superior with a record of twenty five and eleven this season. Not close whatsoever. Moving on to the bets, Zach took a much needed two to one victory this week. Yes, um, I was finally I paid attention because I bet on all three of the games. Yeah, that makes a um, difference. I hit on the under, but I yeah. parlayed it with the the cover, which looking back on it was very stupid because if you want the under, the you under, want the they had to shut them out. Mm-hmm. You needed the Browns to – or uh, the Lions no, no. to be in that game. Yes, exactly. Um, so, I mean, whatever. Either way. The Lions two weeks in a row burn us because yep. they cover. They do cover both weeks. So uh, that so I had the Lions plus 10. I also had Washington plus three and a half. And Dalton's win was the Eagles plus one and a, uh, plus one and a half. Minus one and a half. Minus one and a half. I got that backwards on my sheet. Either way, wouldn't have mattered. Um, with the running total now, so Zach does take week 11. Um, and the running total is Zach 16 to 14. Um, and I, I decided, and, go ahead, but, um, I did decide, I mean, of our season long bets, um, we've always did total points. We've never done points per game. Um, and, and any of our season long or rest of season bets, um, we will, um, just go with total points as we've always done. Um, because otherwise we're modifying multiple bets. Um, Nick Chubb obviously missed a game with COVID um all that sort of stuff as well um that interesting the one interesting bet i really like now is the cowboys number three um it's number close. three well because now elijah moore's in there elijah moore oh yeah. and and Corey davis are within like two points both of them so i have a of shot dalton of, schultz? of dalton schultz like one point yeah. one or two it's great that's that's gonna be our one of our most fun bets um i'd like to issue one more all right let's see this i'm not doing Tyler. i'm not i'm looking at this and i'm i'm not very confident in my season long bets that's the only one i'm confident in 
You have a lead with the cards winning the division. You have the DJ Moore, the Taysom Hill one. I don't, I mean, that one could still hit. I need four more rushing touchdowns. Okay. And Nick Chubb is going to be close, but I should win that one. Okay. Cardinals are going into a bye this week. Yeah. Kyler should be back in week 13. Yeah, correct. I would like to wager Kyler Murray versus Lamar Jackson total points from 13 through 17. I got to do a little bit more research on that. I can't just go off a field. I just, I got to look at some numbers and matchups. I can't just, can't go off the whim. Um, but I'll text you about that. Okay. That one might be on the board. That one might be on the board. Yeah. That one a little tough. I can't, I got to look at some matchups and we don't have to go ahead, sir. And I want to make sure Lamar Jackson freaking plays. Well, he was out this week. That's why I thought it'd be a fun uh, bet. I think they will both um, likely be back in week 13. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look at the point totals. They're really close. They're really close. Yeah, well, Lamar's missed the – I mean, Kyler's missed the last couple of games. Yeah, um, three weeks. Last week we played the the top 12 tight ends. I want you to guess – I mean, we can do this real fast. Um, I know we've been going long already. Um, can you name the top 12 um, – we want to do last four weeks. Is that what you did last time? Yeah. Um, last four weeks, top 12 running backs. Okay, give me one second. Okay, top 12. Jonathan Taylor. Number one. <laughs> That's an easy Dalvin one. Dalvin Cook. Uh, number seven. Elijah Mitchell. No. Michael Carter. Six. So the, these scores also include this this last week because it is Tuesday. Daryl Williams. Ten. Oh, man. I'm going to take three more guesses. Okay. Um I think this is the whiskey, but 28 for the Packers. AJ Dillon? Yes. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Cordero Patterson? Wrong. Oh, uh, wow. He didn't play this week, and last week he had like five points. So you got five so Ezekiel, far. Is Ezekiel Elliott. He's 12. That's six. Got one more. Right. Yes. That was, that was okay. Um, hold on. One more. David Montgomery. No, he just came back from IR. Okay. Um, number one through 12, Jonathan Taylor. Austin Eckler. Oh, duh. James Connor. Duh. Joe Mixon. Also, duh. Najee Harris. Michael Carter. Dalvin Cook. Christian McCaffrey. AJ Dillon. Darrell Williams, Nick Chubb at 11, and Zeke Elliott at 12. Mark Ingram, 13. Ramondre Stevenson, 14. <laughs> Interesting. I should tell you never to start a running back in the flex. Exactly. Cordell Patterson was 20, though. Two Jets running backs. There you go, Ty Johnson. Um, quick preview. Quick preview. I will be taking on the dark horse who is eliminated from playoff contention, I believe at three and eight. Not quite. There's a couple, there's a couple three and eight teams. Um, well, I mean, if Lena is eliminated, then so is he, that's why I said it's still possible. I think this is the last week to decide those seven and eight playoff spots or maybe just the eighth. Well, because drew or not drew. Uh, yeah. Drew and Cole are both five and six. They have the lead on the seven and eight spot. Um, so there may be a team. So it's there. still possible. It's very possible. Um, but Bla we all know Blaster can't get it. Blaster that's, can't that's get it, fact. but he can play spoils. Um, 
he has not officially clinched the last seed yet because there are three and eight teams and he is oh and over oh and eleven. Yeah, um, and he plays Heath, who has not no. clinched the playoffs. Has not. Um, you, I mean, I'm um, going back to the matchup. You're you're missing Kelsey this week. Obviously, you got to find tight end. You yeah. lost uh, Michael Carter. I'm just gonna be looking for a touchdown. Yep. Um, good luck. Um, <laughs> Dark Horse gonna fight with some injuries. It looks like he needs to get on a roll in the next few weeks. He's down to the 11th spot. Obviously, he lost six in a row. Um, back inside. Somehow, Conference Lean play. has the tiebreaker, I believe. Over him? Yes. Well, he has to if he's 11. Um, yeah. uh-huh. Cody um, takes at? on Pat in a huge matchup, one versus three. These, The top two spots and the top four teams in our division play each other, and it's going to be wild. Uh, this one's huge. Yep, Patrick, eight and three, sack at nine and two. This is going to break out the, the division. Um Sackett's missing James Conner and CEH. Rough at uh, uh, David Harris and Stevenson again, it looks like, for I'm just going to play um, onslaught the Patriots' backfield. Um, Patrick, uh, he may be getting Kareem Hunt back this week um, and Cordero Patterson. Interesting. Um, so, and Daryl Henderson. So that's good for him. Uh, he just had to hang on, basically. Pat Patrick should play all three running backs that he was traded by. Second, Patterson, Elijah Mitchell, and Daryl Henderson. It's like when the uh, the Rams rolled out all their draft picks against the uh, yeah. Redskins as captains. <laughs> oh man! Um, right now, Patrick has three tight ends in his lineup. I'm sure that's going to change. Um, yeah, we'll see. Cole has to get a win against Lean. Uh, Lean is currently projected to win, so that'll be interesting. Yes, uh, Cole will be getting back. Uh, Obviously, no Hopkins, no Cooper still. Um, he does have the Chubb-Dillon mix right now. Kyle Pitts against Jacksonville is nice. Um, yeah, if, if Lincoln pull off a few dubs, man, that's going to be wild. Um, but Still possible. Very still, unlikely. Yeah, he may. I don't know if there's a situation where we can get six and, six and two in. I don't think that's possible. Six and, and two. Six teams from all six from our conference. It won't I happen. I don't think it'll happen. Right now, it's a it's five and three. It's a five three split right now. Um, it was four and four last week, so we'll see. Yep. And Cole was able to squeak in now to make it five five three. Um, Stewart Brinkman taking on Drew. Uh, Stewart is on the OIL outside or OLI outside looking in. Uh, whoever wins this will be in the driver's seat for the playoffs. Who's on the outside looking in? Stu. Yep, Brinkman. Stu. Yep, he is. Uh, it looks like no Stu Patty should get a win, though. Drew. Yep. And possibly no C.D. Lamb. Um, it's going to be a rough week for Drew, but he somehow makes it work. He gets that full lineup in every week. He's got Tony, Justin, or Van Jefferson. He's got some good players on his bench that he can plug in. Um, should be fine there. <laughs> Um, Brief gets a cake matchup against Blaster. Uh, cake matchup, huh? Yeah. Come on, Blaster. We need you, man. We need you. We I need him. Um, basically, that would if Heath loses this week, I guarantees me a play. Uh, the number one seed in my division, I believe. Yeah, it guarantees you a top two s- spot in the playoffs. Yes. <laughs> um, but I believe you guys play one more time, so that's. Yes, so I believe be in week deal. fourteen. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, no, um, we play next week, uh, um, thirteen. It, I would not. I mean, it would not shock me if Blaster. Uh, like, there's going to be a week. Blaster is going to put it all together, and it's going to be eventually. Yeah, it may. Not, and we've never had a team go winless, so no, it's going to be going to happen. He's got. He's got. Well, he could go winless in the regular season. And then still the damn the free agent team had two wins. Okay. I know. And this team has better players. Yes. Much um, better. The Dale right. Brennan bowl. 2.0. Second time we played this year, Luke beat me by a few points. Oh no, not a few points. He beat me by like 20. Um, Dale Brennan bowl. Um, early projections. We both have 
set our lineups early indications. It's going to be um, so close. Another tight one, man. Um, it's a b- big matchup for me. I need to I need to get back on the winning streak. Um, uh, I mean, otherwise, I I could fall down to the eight spot, and no one wants to see me in the eight as the one eight. No one wants that. Um, so we'll see about that. Um, I'm losing Tyree Kill, obviously. Um, so which is huge. Which is huge. Um, but I, I got, I got my guys. I'm all right. Um, but yeah, going to be a close one. Dale Brennan bowl, baby. Yeah. The, uh, you're the double A or the war. I am the double A. It is a huge week for the double A. Um, huge week. The top four teams playing each other. I might be sitting as the number one seed at the end of this week. It's possible. Did you beat – well, the thing is, if, if say, you win – I beat Pat your brother. Wins, if Pat, yeah, but if Pat wins, you win, Luke loses, and Sackett loses, you're all nine and two. I don't know where that would put me. I haven't done the calculation. That would be a – four, weeks left. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a four-way – that would be a four-way tie, and it would be a, the, your total record against all teams in that. Equal opponents, yep. Yep. So that would, but either way, you're still at the top of the other division. So, um, yeah, but that would be interesting to see how that breakdown because it'd be the two or the three or three or four seed, um, how that works out. Um, man, I can't believe I'm that close on points behind you. I know. Well, you scored one six. I have more else. points against. Uh, I feel bad for Blaster. Look at his points against the hot, he's got faced the toughest schedule for the season. Yeah. I, I faced the third toughest schedule. Yeah. Um, looking at it, um, overall, I mean, I've still, I mean, I'm number one in breakdown. I'm the number one coach and I'm number one in true, number one in true, but I'm still Uh, sitting there at tied for second and true. Tied for second. Is it time? You might. Yeah. I'm tied. Oh, you're tied for second. You still haven't even guaranteed the playoffs and you're number one in true. I know I've, I have a good team. I'm not, I, that's why I'm not totally worried, but I, but I play in such a tough division, which makes me worried because I still I, I thought I had the toughest three week stretch. I had to play you last week. I had to play Luke this week. And the week after I had to play Patrick. But Patrick, had, but Patrick has a lot of bye weeks next week. We've talked about it when he was up here a few weeks ago. He's got a lot. Of, he's got McCaffrey, A.J. Brown and D.J. Moore on a bye, which is top three players. Um, but I mean, I could fall down to like. I, I, I could be six and six. I lose the pad. I'm six and seven. I have to beat lean in week eight or the last week. So, I mean, that wouldn't that, wouldn't that be something the highest scoring team not make the playoffs. That would be the ultimate. Uh, I think you're suck up curse. That would be the ultimate one, but yeah, waivers, tell. waivers go through tonight. tonight. Obviously this is Tuesday night. Um, For the first time we're recording on a Tuesday this year. Um, trade deadline has passed. We did not, Foreshadow have any deadline well. deals. No. Um, I got which, a couple offers. None of them were worth considering. Yeah. So I tried to I actually think I made the most deals this year. Yeah, I think you had three. You had which three. is weird because one went dark horse, one with me, one with Luke. Nobody wants to make deals, right? And this now, is the thing. I think it's just because the waiver wire is so lucrative. Yeah. Um, I think this is the first time maybe we need to... never made a trade. This might be maybe the first time to... he's never had one. But he sent a lot of trades. It's just no one. Wanted oh, no one wanted to deal with them. Maybe, maybe we need to shrink our bench to increase the trades. No way, man. I love the. That's something to consider. People are just afraid of trades. We've talked about it. Like they're afraid to make the wrong move. You're afraid, like, right. what if that guy gets hurt? Like, what if? I mean, I mean, I mean, I tried to trade. Our trade worked out pretty good. Yeah, We're I mean, I, I tried to, yeah, for now. I mean, what if someone, I mean, obviously. You, it'd you it'd be off. very great if I got a 30-something point game from Debo in the playoffs against you. Oh, man. I'm glad he didn't it's go possible. for 30 against At any time. time. At yeah. any time, he can hit 30. At any time. But so can Deontay. Maybe not 30, but he's going to give me a, he's, he's going to give me Nine more for offer. 80 every week. He's going to give me a better 20-point floor every week. Yeah. Which is what I was going for, plus some high upside tight end play. I'm I'm totally fine with that trade. Um, I still am. Um, Me too. 
And but that, I, I was no able to wants, fit Elijah Moore into my team, but we'll yeah, see no, how he looks. No one, Zach Wilson. But no one wants to be wrong. No one wants to be get fleeced or, and it's it's hard to make those trades when everyone values their team and players differently. Some players just don't want to trade, and that's fine. Um, it just it I really wish I would have traded Antonio Gibson weeks ago, but yeah, I wouldn't I mean, have got much. I tried more to trade at any point. So in another league of mine, I tried to trade Mike uh, Michael Carter all of last week. Could not get an offer I wanted, and now then he gets hurt. Then he gets hurt. Now I can't trade him. I just yeah. But all right, um, we've ran very long. Yeah, I we think have. We should, uh, conclude um, this. The bets this week, though, are we? Um, oh yeah, we're doing a Turkey Day. Turkey uh, Day main. We're slate. doing. Yep. Which means I need to put in my lineup like immediately because or tomorrow because I work on Thursday and I will not have access to it. Okay, I will. Um, I'll set that up tomorrow. I'll send you the invite. Um, and I'll set my lineup tomorrow night. So. Uh, you under the three dollar one again? Yep. Okay. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, for all the marbles, three zero sweep for the turkey. Oh, um, any um quick preview for the Thursday games? We got some really crappy fo- actual football games on. We have the Bears and the Lions. We have the Cowboys Raiders. Cowboys Raiders and Bills Saints. Do you have, I think the second two games will be nice. Um, for, for an additional point, we did this last year. Can the turkey gobbler, who is the turkey gobbler? Do you, you get an additional one point um, if you get the turkey gobbler? Um, name, name the players one more time. So we have uh, the teams. Uh, Bears, Lions, Cowboys, Raiders, and Saints Bills. Turkey gobbler. Which wide receiver or running back? It's always been a wide receiver or running back. Last year was Antonio Gibson. I think it was the first that was the first running back in a while. Um, Can I, I pick first? Yeah, I think you're gonna go the, no. Good. I, I think I mean I, I think it's the logical answer, and I think you're gonna take it. So uh Mark Ingram, the second. Stefan Diggs. Oh, good point. Okay, that's locked in. All right. Well, you're going Mark Ingram. What if Kamara plays? You just want whichever running back? Well, uh, no. Give me Mark Ingram. Well, what if Kamara plays? I don't think he is. Give me Mark Ingram. Okay. That's good. Mark Ingram and Stefan Diggs for Turkey Gobbler. Extra point for the week. Um, if you I'm, nail it, obviously. Oh, God. That's a, that's a dumb pick for me. I play against Stefan Diggs. <laughs> Great idea, Zach um is that point worth the loss maybe who knows um but um i thought that was the one you were going to go with the most logical um stefan diggs but or i could have gone deandre swift because i actually have deandre swift but i wanted to stay away from the lions you gotta you gotta win to have the gobbler you gotta win to have the gobbler all right man um great on a tuesday night um yeah, uh, it's money time. Time for the money. It's over. Last three weeks. Let's do it. See you See guys you. next week. <laughs>